gonna call this meeting to order. Eight and four. Too bad. <laughs> um, um, so just in the beginning, before the meeting gets really started, I just want to thank everybody for all their work on the budget and for the town for passing the budget and helping us really keep Waitley Elementary School thriving. So, just want to say that. Absolutely. Um, so we first thing is to review the minutes and approve the minutes. So moved. All in favor? Okay. Uh, public comment. No public anymore. It was nice having the public here before. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah. Uh, no unfinished business. So we have new business. Financials. Oh, financials. I skipped over. That's okay. Most important. <laughs> um, you have seven warrants in front of you for a total of $61,807.65. That makes uh, some signatures. Um, I am still trying to monitor and track uh, projections to the end of the year. I've been working with payroll on um, taking a look at those lines in particular, and it seems as though we do have some surpluses in several of the pay payroll lines. Um, that are going to be helpful. Um, there's a couple of, I've done most of the reconciliation to bring lines into, um, into balance um, on page three of the um, April printout uh, for professional development for teachers. There is a, um, there's a uh, $1,100 um, expense that needs to be reclassified to a different function because of change of chartered accounts from the DESI. Um, we have an open purchase order still from the collaborative, so I don't know if there are more invoices. I'm trying to track that down and see if we can't close that purchase order out. Then I'll move the expenses to the proper uh, line Which one for is that. that? It's just an open purchase order. It's not in here yet. Um, it's a, it shows as an encumbrance for $1,000 under that line. To the um, collaborative? Yep. And it's an open purchase order, so um, I just need to see whether or not it. We are anticipating invoices. If not, we'll close it out. And um, you know what's what's uh, up with that. So that I've got to still track down, and then I'll move those expenses into the proper place. Um, transportation, regular transportation, currently shows a deficit amount of four thousand sixty dollars. And it's my understanding before I arrived that there was an issue with where transportation was being charged, particularly in the area of special education. So um, basically that um, all of those moving parts have been taken care of and the encumbrance in transportation needs to be reduced by this by that four thousand sixty dollars. Once that encumbrance is reduced, that will take care of that line. So those are um, the two big things. In school choice, uh, we have a little bit of deficit in the SPED transportation line. Again, um, it's part of this whole thing that happened in the fall. Um, so uh, it's been determined that the encumbrance that's in that line can be reduced by $180. So we're looking at 340 which is, I don't think, um, that big a deal. Um, again, I put together uh, projections, a um, set of projections for you, um, which is after the financial report. Um, so you can see uh, where each of uh, the areas stand at this particular point in time. Again, we're looking at some savings um, in uh, salaries in particular that, um, you know, we're still uh, monitoring, but um, basically we've done a sort of paper encumbrance of salaries through to the end of the year. Um, so uh, we're looking in pretty good shape. My recommendation to you would be to think about us for the remainder of the year trying to offload some school choice into the local budget salary wise mm -hmm. and give you a little breathing mm -hmm. space because as you know it's it will be tight by the end of fiscal uh, 20 so that would be my recommendation is that we take anything that we're saving try and get salaries over the next there's a payroll going out this week but for the remainder of the payrolls getting your salaries into the regular budget mm -hmm. spending this down so that you have a little more breathing room in school choice so how would we make that happen? Um, 
I just wave a magic wand. Okay. <laughs> we, 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 we just, <laughs> tell Judy. We just say to do it. Because, yeah, so okay. the, the balance is the two things that, because Chrissy and I have also been talking about if there's any of your money, um, whether or not to resurface the gym floor, mm. you know, and the ship's is, already shield, is that already been moved forward there? Is that numbers including that? I haven't figured out the numbers on that, but mm. I talked about let's go about it. And okay. Um, he sort of put it into the, the greater scheme of the other projects he's got going, and it looks like it's going to... Okay, so <coughs> it's just balancing out, it's trying to do some um, yeah. maintenance, maintenance mm -hmm. you know, annual maintenance projects, and also doing a balance, so it just... I yeah. just didn't know if just this discussion now means that... Yeah, you don't happen. have to vote. Okay. No, that's a, that can be done just yeah, okay. into communicating with you that we're doing that kind of thing, right. because I think that's mm -hmm. one of the... Look at watching into your money is always um, twofold. It's <coughs> the public wants to know what you're doing with any of your money and how much you know. If you have a if you have an excess. Why do you have an excess? Yeah. This is not a really an excess. This is, yeah. this is barely a. Yeah. You know, yeah this is room. just changing um, sands of salaries. But all. people want to know what you're doing with it, so it's good mm -hmm. to talk about it. But mm -hmm. <coughs> I see um, oh, at the last meeting, um, that was the joint meeting. There was a question about a tractor that. We signed a warrant. Oh yeah, the warrant that yeah, was did that get that correct? correct. So okay, yeah. yeah. So that was sent to that was the one the frontiers mower right. was sent to the school committees, the committees instead of sent it. to the town. So right. it was a town warrant yeah. on the FY nineteen budget, and so that got I believe. Okay. Right. Yeah, so I think Mark took it. We're not opposed to contributing, but we want to use it too. Yeah, right. So <laughs> so no, that was the was the tractor that came in under budget. Good. That's a frontier <laughs> thing. <laughs> Judy, I just have one question. It looks like there's nothing left in the professional development. In 23.57, um, there shouldn't be because we had to reclass everything into 23.56. Oh, okay. So I'm just looking um, at the That's wrong just a change. Spot. That's a change of the chart of, of the accounts. Lines of okay. The, yeah. So. I was going to say, if we're at zero, then I lost track of some. No, I had to move everything okay. uh, into the other. The custodial services, fourteen thousand dollars savings so far. What are we hiring? Is that I, well, I hired opening. you hired someone? Yeah, okay. Because we had an open position all okay. year. Okay. Yeah, like. So we were running skinny. Yeah. Yeah. Running. Dan was working a lot okay. of hours, and then over vacations, um, Kathy from the cafeteria was helping out. So some of those things that were being neglected because we we're shorthand. Yeah. Um, got taken care of during vacation. So I'm not sure what there is for in terms of a surplus. Well, right here it says about four, a little over $14,000 yeah. in so salary true. savings right this minute. Right, so between not having hired the, um, the part-time custodian plus there's um, still some money left over in custodial temp services. So that's the current snapshot. Again, that's one of those things where we need to have a conversation with Bob about is there anything you're anticipating the last two weeks of school after mm -hmm. all the kids are gone that might bring that number down? But that's the current state of affairs. So well, again, yeah, I mean, continue so to watch lower with that. It sounds like yeah, that, that one thing we have to check is that did I doubt we've encumbered the gym floor into that thirty four thousand. Mm -hmm. so, no, not that I'm aware. So Bob that has not approached that's thirty four minus we were saying nine was the number? Nine thousand nine hundred. So let's just say mm -hmm. minus ten thousand. Mm -hmm. So you're looking 24. at twenty four. Yeah. So anything else we'll we will put over to school choice outside of that. Right. Okay. Right. And is there any other smaller things that if there's any other small things that you know, but we're basically we're hoping yeah. to bring around twenty thousand ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it'd probably be fair. Maybe getting maybe getting another four thousand to play with for smaller. Yeah, the only other thing areas. that we had discussed was possibly um, cafeteria tables, but so I look at what your numbers are, and maybe we do that over two years, or you can figure out, depending on what kind of style. Well, one of the issues is that um, the tables are not the right size for our little friends. So um, it's start one with the small kids. Yeah, get, mm -hmm. get a get few small, small tables for the, the little guys. That's one of the reasons why the pre-K kids don't eat in the cafeteria, and I'd like to see them be able mm -hmm. to Towards the end of the year, start transitioning into the well, larger out, population. Let's find out. You're not talking. Those aren't. Yeah, only a few gonna tables. Be, it's going to be a couple hundred bucks a table, and depending on how you do it. Is it all in one system, or if it's going to be chair system? You got to think about that too, obviously, because you do community events. So you're going to have to. If you're going to have the all-in-one things, that are terrible for community events. 
but they work great for little guys who can't <laughs> so yeah, bounce around. Yeah, so right. you may have you might have some of those, and those will be you know you'll have to figure that out. But <laughs> right. enough, the, enough advice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay, so let's connect on those <clears throat> things over the next week or so, of course, just so we can get that All right. taken care of. Um, I right. can also share the email that Bob sent because I had asked, like, how is this going to work with the the gym floor? Where does that fit in? Okay. Um, so he sort of I don't think, no, gave me a list of the other that. things on his, okay. on his list. Well, One of the things he had mentioned was some generator expenses. Oh, is that haven't paid yet? But that should be part of a different, What's that's the capital budget. Maintenance. Oh, me. Oh, yearly, contract? you're talking about yearly maintenance possibly. Yeah, we built the contract into here, I think, for next year. We did, we talked about okay. that. I'm pretty sure it should be the Um yes. the the nine over nine thousand for the gym floor, is that to re sand it, reline it, the that's, whole nine yards. That's to to go the distance with that. And then the thought was in the following years we would do the the sort of maintenance program of just buffing it over the summer. But it's um, it has a few layers on it. It does and it's hasn't been done in very slippery I hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So at, at this point, it's somewhat of a safety issue. Yep. Kids slipping and sliding all over in there. Yep. It's a good time to get it done early in the summer. Yep. Right. Okay. Well, good job on the budget, yeah. everybody. It's, uh, it's great. Anything else? Any other questions? On? Yeah, John, I'm sorry, I pulled up an email, I pulled up Bob's email, and he says, we, we need to do some preventative maintenance on the new generator, purchase, install new batteries for the sprinkler system, accelerators, alarm noise, basement, is that basement, DSMT? Yes. And I have been planning to have a roofer to do the yearly maintenance on the roof. So he's he's got it all under control in this email. So okay. he's, he's a, I'm just reading Somebody out what I'm to say. I'm to say he's really on it. I can see so, what he's you know, I will forward it to you so you have that when he's talking about Thank that. He's keeping it all within the budget that we have now. He's not looking for money outside. Mm -hmm. so, so. Yeah, and that, that um, surplus in the custodial line has nothing to do with <coughs> any of the building repairs or anything, but that's just a salary saving. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's in the lines that are for the budget maintenance of buildings, mm -hmm. you're saying? But yeah, there isn't I'll much encumbered there, so. Yeah, probably because the purchase orders haven't been cut yet, yeah. so. Okay. Well, hopefully if it's just been installed and it's been running that it won't need any maintenance in maintenance. 2019, but possibly yeah, next. Yeah, he wasn't calling the big numbers. He was talking about a $3,000 over left over for after. Yeah. It's a long, it's a long email. But, okay. Um, but he, I was just only talking about the generators since that sparked people's ears. Okay. So now it's new business. Now it's new business. All right. So the first new business is the Comprehensive School Health Services Grant. So we applied, um, uh, Meg Birch, the school nurse leader and Conway School Nurse, uh, applied for a uh, school health um, grant. And basically what that grant was to do is to um, pay for the nurse leader and have the nurse leader do more, become actually a part-time nurse leader. It's over three years and then there's an extension and such um, after that. But really to try to streamline the way we're doing services, um, health services in all of our buildings. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of health needs of our students have, has increased dramatically. Um, and not because there's more students with health needs, but I think you have more students with health needs attending public schools and successfully every day without um, needing additional accommodations. So, um, amount of diabetics, you know, allergies, those kind of things. And so, she applied for this grant and we received the grant. Um, and I'd hope tonight to be bringing, this morning rather, to be bringing the uh, grant here for you to approve. However, midweek last week, the numbers for the grant came out and it's lower than what we asked for. And so there's an error within, we're going back and forth with the state on it, there's an error within um, how we're regionalized and our overall um, need um, is based on the Frontiers numbers, not on all the elementary numbers. And even though it's clearly, we feel it's clearly stated in there, they're saying it wasn't clearly stated, but 
So in the application. In the application. Okay. And so um, because we're kind of broken up and there's multiple numbers, we're looking at, I guess, looking at the lead numbers. So we are currently in conversation with the state of two things. One, can they give us the extra, it's about $20,000 difference or maybe slightly under. Um, will they award us the extra $20,000 so we can fully roll out what we requested as part of the grant? Or can we modify the grant because we can't do it mm -hmm. for what we said because we would have to pick up the costs of a lot of the grant is paying for a substitute or I want to say a substitute nurse, but a part-time nurse okay. to replace mm -hmm. um, Meg to do this. And the reason why it's got to come in front of the school committee um, as well is because after the three years, um, there is, in order to continue the grant, we have to pick up some of the, mm -hmm. you know, how they do that. Mm -hmm. So some I want to be very clear what that looks like, or, or, we'd stop. or we'd stop doing it. And so I think by all means, you know, just in the planning of it, that we take the, the money so we can get that done create systems in place and that kind of thing and then we can see where we are because we already fund um, a um, nurse leader in our budgets um, and um, that kind of thing so we already have that kind of in place we just didn't she just didn't have enough time to do the kind of I don't want to say fix things and put pr procedures and protocols and support the other nurses and some professional development that um, <clears throat> would be good to have so so you're on hold, and so I'm gonna have to bring this back next month, and, and um, we'll have to do the vote then. Okay. Um, like I said, they were kind of, I'm not sure if they were late within their own timeline of getting out. It's a little late in the year, I think, for grants to be awarded in the sense that we can't adjust our budgets if we have any, you can yeah. it. So it's gotta either fit perfectly, or we, the other option is we don't accept it. So mm -hmm. we're trying to, you know, and, right. So we wanna, we obviously, we wanna take money and services that we can get um, from grants, but at the same time, so. So can you explain how it works now with the nurse leader model you said? We have yep, so there's today. a nurse leader who receives um, a stipend to oversee all the, there's a lot of paperwork dealing with the state in regards to um, <clears throat> what we're doing in the school with, each, with all the nurses, and from musicians to um, you know, tracking all the different kind of things coming down. She also works as a, the leader for professional development, um, and we'll make sure the nurses are up to date on all mm -hmm. those things and any, you know, anytime we get, you know, for example, recently we've had the, you know, certainly a lot of talk in the news regarding where musicians are, mm -hmm. and, you know, that kind of stuff and measles and that kind of thing mm -hmm. and where we are with all our schools, who's, who's tracking that. Um, so Meg is the nurse Meg leader? Meg is the nurse leader. And is it just for the elementary schools? No, or is it middle for the whole, so it's for the whole, the whole region? So yeah, so it comes from the, it comes out of the central office. Um, expenses. expenses. But she's also the nurse at Conway. She's right? also the nurse at Conway. So, these are, so, this is so she gets a stipend to do work. So she okay. stays stays late. Um, it's a um, very it's a very busy job. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the small things that I'm happy she takes care of. So that I'm not having to do it. But um, <laughs> okay. you know, and I can have her explain. Um, that I should probably will come to the mm -hmm. the, the she can make, make special meeting like this in the morning, which is easy, um, to kind of go through that. And um, can you send it ahead of time? Yep. When you're um, planning to yep. get us to yep. vote on it, that'd be great. Sure. Okay. So I would, I would ask two things. One, um, that we move that to the end, okay. and then we go to executive discussion, executive session to discuss that. Okay. Um, the fact that um, we are in open negotiations with another, with our unions, um, I think that affects our non-union, okay. which be a conversation that. That has to finish. The negotiations are done. Nope. Oh. So. Um, Right. And we have we can talk about that as well because um, that is also in executive, in executive. Yes. We have both executive sessions listed, so I would imagine that'd be appropriate for both those things. Okay. So then I added um, an item to start talking about a long-term planning committee because we had discussed with the finance committee, you know, sort of making sure that we're keeping an eye on where Wheatley Elementary is going, how we're going to get there, what the impacts going to be on the budget for the town, so that we can. Um, 
be thinking, you know, years ahead instead of just every year. Mm -hmm. to them. Are you thinking just about the physical plant, or are you talking no, about the academic program? No, the program and the school, and just how do we, again, maintain a thriving elementary school you know, lately, mm -hmm. um, given that they're, you know, being quite supportive right now, so we want to make sure that we're able to capitalize on that, so and I'll let them know what our long term Yeah, plans. and include the town and the finance committee, ideally, in those discussions at some point, mm -hmm. so that they can be um, aware of where we're heading. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, typically there's like the strategic plan that like the district would have and then our school would line up with that. So I, I just wanted to start talking about how we might incorporate this. We had talked about maybe in the summertime getting something going to the extent that some people are around in the summer. I'd really like to involve parents in that those conversations and we also have the school council that we're supposed to have. So I don't know if we could maybe combine, being that we're a small school, maybe we just combine the duties of the school council to be part of the Long Range Planning Committee so that um, you know, we kind of kill two birds with one stone in that way. Um, but it seems like now is a good time to start thinking about that and get organized before school. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys have had a chance to think about that. I can come up with something <laughs> if people there want. Are, so. <laughs> but I want to line up with whatever you're doing. Also. Yeah, so that's kind of an all-encompassing long-term planning committee in the sense of we're long-term planning in so many of our different communities. Yes. Yes, I mean, and there's got to be a better um, financial long-term planning is something that has not been, you know, talked that. about in that. Right. Pulled out it all needs part. to dissect down to right. the so, um, money at the end. Right. We're going to be modifying the strategic plan this summer. Um, on the, it's on the administrative team agenda to do that, okay. and so that can, you know, those are going to be some. Those are going to be really general. And each school will have to will then adapt as part of their um, school improvement plans to fit into that. Mm -hmm. it, they're usually the strategic plan is general enough where there's a lot of flexibility to do that. Um, that's why we were able to run off of last year's um, or two years ago when. Lynn, Dr. Carey put one together. Um, it was general enough for us to keep going with it. And mm -hmm. We were able to modify within it. So I guess I'm just looking for more, because I, I agree that we need to do more, certainly capital long-term planning has to be more. Mm -hmm. It exists, but it's not been transparent to even this committee. Right. Um, I mean, Bob has that, has a list of all the things he's knocking off better. each thing. Yeah, but I, you know, um, and you'll see on my superintendent's list, Bob is retiring um, and you know, a new person onboarding a new person, making that a priority for all the, I think for all the, all the schools is going to be, I think everybody wants to see this mm -hmm. uh, more transparent three year to five year plans yeah. on all fiscal needs, um, that kind of, not fiscal needs, um, facility needs. Um, the but other, we, but we do do something like that now. We do have it exists. It exists. It has. It's not the, very formalized. The one right. to three, the three to five, the right. color yes. codes, and what's right. the priority? What's been put? You know right. that we're looking ten years down the road, or seven years down the road, or five years. Right. I mean, we do have. We've started. I, I think you know we've had that, that for a while. I'm not sure the if there's other parts of of if you're talking about people in general and different positions through central offices if that's what you're talking about mm -hmm. but I think facility wise you know like you know like we have a plan like this year to do the carpet rest of the carpets and the things I mean yeah. that was well, part the of rest. that, that huh? not the rest of the carpets okay I'd love to do the rest uh, I, I, I do but yeah. I think no, we have there is a plan it's just that it isn't really um, in a format that can be shared easily with other people <clears throat> And monitor easily. So I think what we, what my goal would be, is to get that into some sort of more formalized version that could even live on the web, and that we could easily, we, this committee yeah. or the town or whoever wants to view it, could say, oh, here's what's going on at the school this year, or here's what should be going on at the school this year. And I, and I and agree. I think that's what we're the, we, for. we have we have the information, we have the, right. and I would say Bob's like, done the homework of like right what now, needs to happen when, right. which is great. That was the first step. Right. If you brought something up now, I should be able to click three or four buttons and, and be able say, to say, oh, oh yeah, we're right here. Happening. And next year we'll be doing this. And I don't have that ability, so mm -hmm. I would agree. That's part of it. But I think hearing what the select board had said is. What is the vision of the school five years and ten right. years from now? That's a whole different kind of long-term planning. 
in the sense of, and I'm not sure. It's more programmatic. But I'm not I sure think. where it goes though, because. Well, I think we need to have a vision of where the school, where we want the school to be, and how do we want to differentiate Wheatley Elementary, and how do we keep attracting either people to move to town or. It does choice. sound like the kind of things that are in the school improvement plan. Yeah, and I, again, I don't want to proliferate plans because that doesn't do anybody any good. Mm -hmm. But I do want to keep us focused on at least defining where we're heading mm -hmm. and how we think we'll get there. And that's partly the strategic plan. So I think if you guys do your plan, then we should certainly line up with whatever mm -hmm. the district is doing. Yep. Um, but I also want to make sure we incorporate the voices of the town so that people feel okay. part of it. So it's partly an exercise to get people included, and then it's partly to have somewhere to be focused on, and then monitoring, like, are we getting more students? Are we not getting more students? Are the students doing better? Are they, you know, the typical things that you would monitor. But I think it's a nice way to kind of keep everything together and keep us all focused. On the educational part of things, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, the state dictates you know, like NCAS and how we teach our kids for NCAS they, and stuff. They, I mean, how do you, how do you, you know, every town, unless you're a charter school, every town basically has the same way you have to teach your kids how NCAS goes. No. Well, no? I, 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 um, I would disagree. There's we lots to, of different ways. We have to make sure we cover the curriculum standards. Those right. are the same for everyone right. in Massachusetts. But how we get there is very different from one school to another. I, and I agree there, but I'm just saying that, they do dictate. Well, it's all a starting point. Yeah. And that's, I guess, the my point is we want to be, we want to differentiate from all the other schools potentially and make it even better. Like some schools will do the minimum. The goal is not to do the minimum here. The goal is to do much more than the yeah, minimum. That's a great idea. Yeah. And, um, shoot, I don't know, I thought that just went right out of it. So, next step on this would be to lay out what does it look like? What does the group look like, or you know, and what is the yeah? I think early maybe recruiting <coughs> before the summer. I'd like to recruit some parents mm -hmm. to participate in that because otherwise, I think it'll be hard to get anybody. Oh uh, yeah, I agree. Um, and maybe next for next meeting, we could lay out more um, what the final product would look like, so we know what we're working towards. Okay. And I'm happy to sort of lay out something for you guys, okay. to work with you guys yep. to do that. Um, and it's really just about focusing our, our vision and what, what we want to be accomplishing, I think. Maybe it's like power of minds. You get the PTO, you get the student council, uh, you know, those people together maybe have like, have, yeah. a, have a power. I want to hear what everybody about, loves yeah. about the school and yeah. what they want to think about the school and then try and put it all together. I mean, that's mm -hmm. maybe to have like a, what do they call the big conferences that they have for the forum on, you know, how, how to make our school even better than what it is. Right. I mean, we fought hard to keep Cindy, so yeah. let's think about how does that position really help, um, you know, improve our school, which it does, and I, we all believe that. But let's make sure we're clear on how that's working. Right. Okay. All right, so, so that's will, my goal. We will put that, we will try to get an outline going of that. So okay. That, um, so we can start recruiting yeah. people yeah. after next meeting? We can certainly start, you know, you can start recruiting on the other side saying, hey, will you be interested if we put this together and then yeah. let them know the details are coming. And again, so. I would try and line it up with the school council. I don't know what Maureen thinks, but just because mm -hmm. we're such a small community, it's very hard to get volunteers. get volunteers. So to the extent that we can kind of have the school council be our body that's going to be informing this, and they have to inform the school improvement plan anyway. Right. And that should line up with this. So to me, that's kind of best way to get it. Sounds logical. Okay. Sure. Um, and then, I know, I think I ask this every year, but I'm just curious what the evaluation process is for you guys. Okay. Two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, here's my little spiel is, everybody has things they can approve on, sure. right? Yeah. And if you don't talk about it, then it doesn't necessarily get addressed. There's always great things to also Right. You want to acknowledge and recognize. So, so Principal Curtin gets evaluated by me, okay. and so I have to follow the DESI rubrics to do that. And it's actually on our agenda on Thursday, principals meeting to go through how that's going to work. But mm -hmm. um, basically, so that will all be that's will be done there. And do you get input from other people? Um, or how does that? Work? 
No, it's not done through surveys and such. That's kind of the, that's, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's done through, there's a list of, um, whole thing of standards and, um, yeah, it's very similar to the superintendent on the Yeah. I guess um, my, my point is it's also good to get other perspectives. Yeah. And, then you're not, and I'm sure you're not just basing it on your own. Right, but my perspective has a Yours lot. Of, is mine does have yes. right, but mine has a lot of other people's perspectives and um, feedback from staff and mm -hmm. feedback, um, you know, just from hearing. Okay. So, um, I'll make a plea for parents again <laughs> to right. try and incorporate parents' perspectives okay. where possible. Um, because I'm yeah. also looking There's at her. There's a community her. piece of the rubric. Yeah. There is, there mm -hmm. is, um, and for you know, it, I'm, I'm trying. To, it goes down. So how do you get feedback and that kind of thing? I know, it's true. And, and so, um, but yeah, so that's how that's working. The okay. superintendent one. Um, do I get three years? No. Um, <laughs> they should have. So <laughs> we do, but we do his. <laughs> so. Yeah, but we need feedback. Right. So this is what, you know, um, so the superintendent's evaluation is, I don't know if anybody's, I can send you the link for this. I didn't make um, copies of this thing. It's uh, from um, yeah, you can find MASC. All our, the teacher evaluation it's all there. Course. It's, it's all, all like it's organized, organized on the school website? Or no, on DESI. Oh gosh, so, so basically. you have to do the DESI process? So DESI gives you the, um, the outline of um, the overview and what has to go to the state. How you get there is both negotiated into contracts um, mm -hmm. and figured out by each committee, but you still have to look at the standards and those have to be, you know, put within um, within the evaluation. The evaluation is extremely time consuming. Huh. And so they even estimate it takes 10 hours a week um, of applying in, within this. And so I didn't go, being an interim, I didn't even look at this. Okay. I, although part of my new superintendent thing, I was doing Talk that, but it. however, we talked about it um, however, I didn't completely dive in because I was dealing with a lot of other things with my, it's been busy yet. Um, <laughs> so I currently, um, trying to figure out what I can send out to school committee members where they can fill out very easily. I can give this to you. Yeah, well, we sure. did this for Lena. Huh? Correct. And the issue we had was it's a, the, the process is so cumbersome because there are so many indicators. There's 64 indicators. Yeah, it's a big thing. And so in 24 standards, um, in, did you look at me when you showed me? Judy, needs your help. Yeah, Judy. Uh, no, 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 but I was just saying in the yeah. sense of, I, well, you looked at me when I said 24, but so there's a yeah. lot. Yeah, and yeah then, there's a ton. And, and, yeah. and I, I know the school committee was frustrated through the last time we did this because they're like, well, how are we supposed to know all this stuff? And you're not. And you're not. And, and the actual participation rate of school committee was I know, I was one core. of the few. Um, <laughs> and so there was, you know, literally out of the 25, because you have to remember I have 25 bosses. bosses. Mm -hmm. And so we have to make a system that allows people to get voice, but in a system that can be corralled and... Um, What's the chair's job? It, it, the, and the question is, do the chairs get together to create an evaluation system, not create a system, but yeah, how it's going to be done, um, and so on and so forth. I can just send you the link. Legally, you can um, do this electronically, so you could put some sort of whatever that would gather the data. You have to do this in open session. The evaluation. The evaluation itself. Yeah, is with the superintendent. You can thank the Wayland School Committee for that. So um, you have to sit here while they... Yeah. Yeah, it's public. Yeah. yeah. So you miss that the and all the documents. Piece, right? And all the, do and all the documents. There's ways to do it that aren't, yeah, like, that are constructive. I, yeah, think. Yeah. I mean, I guess I feel like we just want to take advantage of having the opportunity how to many talk about things. How many questions and not are there now? Overburden everybody. Um, it's basically you would rank on all of the substandards and then give a rank of uh, exemplary, proficient, um, needs improvement, needs improvement or unsatisfactory. unsatisfactory on each of the four major standards um, and then give an overall ranking from there. So um, you can't do this offline, you can't do this in executive session, it has to be done in open session, but the Attorney General's office has ruled 
that you could put together a survey, say, and electronically collect the data and bring the data to joint meeting right. or whatever you, however you're going to do this. So right now I'm yeah. trying to, I, I sent out last week a note to the superintendents asking if anybody has that in a, in a Google Forms type of uh -huh. thing so it can be yes. tallied easily and organized easily uh -huh. um, or any one of those kind of things because as you, it's really, you can do the four page thing. I'm not sure how it has to fall within the guidelines of, of Desi. The way I've looked at it was this year was an interim year and I'm really yeah. starting next no, year. So I that's how I personally kind of looked at it. So next year's goals correct, yeah. and everything. Which is and so I was trying to create something that would be straightforward that's user friendly as well. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. you don't have to look at every single standard and every single indicator in order to give feedback. You know? Because mm -hmm. um, I agree that, you know, you know, I want feedback too of areas of, yeah, it's good to of, areas of growth on. and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's where I am right now, okay. trying to figure out how to create that. Um, Would the collaborative be helpful in having some electronic format? I, I, they're in part of my email chain, so um, I haven't heard anything back from anybody. So I gotta go. Let me ask at the virtual school, because I believe that's how the Board of Trustees did me last year. I did not ask them, yeah. But I, I think it was a Google form. Let me just just to recreate it, because I started. Yeah, I actually, I actually start. I started up. to build it myself, and then about thirty minutes in, I was like, "This is going to take me a week." Let me go see before I reinvent the wheel. Let me, let me ask. Um, um, I actually have a meeting with the current executive director uh, tomorrow afternoon. So mm -hmm. let me ask when I'm there um, mm -hmm. how how they did it last year. I believe it was a goal form, mm -hmm. and if so, I can probably grab a clean copy of it. Yeah. The more sim the more simpler everybody simpler will, the process. The, it, the more simple the process, the more people yes, are going to do it. To the more confusing it is. I agree. And I'm one of those type people. Sometimes the more confusing, I just like because like you were you were saying earlier, like you start reading and says, I have no idea. I have no idea. It was like there's going to be questions that the average school committee member is not going to know mm -hmm. because they're not like being chairs. You know, makes it makes right. a difference because we're we're in, we're talking to other, a lot of other people being chairs. Mm -hmm. Where Maureen is a school committee member and sh she's not talking to Darius Weekly or or well, Louise just Law just or ones. something like that. So you're gonna yeah. do the ones that you that know. I'm so how do you how do you so what happens to the blank ones? How does it get scored? And you know, all these things, it, it well, sometimes. I mean, I'm not looking for a score per se. I'm no. just looking for the spirit of like what's going well, what's not going well, mm -hmm. and let's make sure we're all on the same page. So then mm -hmm. <clears throat> it leads to more effective yeah, governance we going forward. Success. Right. So, and, and, I'm, and I'm, I am fine. Um, my approach on this is to not get spend, my only concern on this is spending. Countless yeah, hours no, no creating, to too much time creating, um, forms that creating information <laughs> to be evaluated on, and instead of I don't mind, you know, you know, even when I was principal, we used to, used to hand out note cards to everybody and say, write, you know, right. write what's going well, and write what you give well, constructive like criticism, improve, whatever, right. and then turn them back That's in, all and, we we go th know. and we go through them and that kind of stuff, just as a, just to talk about different issues and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And I also know it's an open process. And listen, it, it my problem is my concern from where we sit as a district. Is it's very unruly, in the sense of because we have five so different people, districts, yeah. you know how are things you know how are things weighted? How are things you know one school might be running you know, and so how are mm -hmm. and then how do you collect all that information in a way where not just my own time but if you have the chair spending, if you're spending twenty hours together to put this together, right. to tell me you're proficient. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of yeah, like, could we have spent those 20 hours on something else when if I'm not proficient, I'm going to be, yeah, it's pretty planning. clear in these meetings when things aren't going well. We could spend those 20 hours on your planning. My planning. Committee. But, but there's, there's some, there's some yeah. truth to that. And so that's where, I guess that's where I'm coming, that's where my kind of like, what, how do we, I want to do this in a way that is efficient. We get the feedback that's necessary. Mm -hmm. We get the scoring that's necessary for the state. Um, but it doesn't. You know how can we do? And I think electronically yeah. to start, yeah. and then and then I, I think you have I to lean on the chairs to pull it together. And well, and I think the another feedback. thing you might want to think about, um, which is allowable, um, is extrapolating 
based on your district strategic plan, what standards and indicators are going to be the ones of focus and not worry about ranking right. all of them. Right. But doing right. it more focus strategic, on the few that mo doing it strategically, I can remember as a superintendent doing that, passing that off to the principals. They sort of did the same thing, and then we did the same thing for teachers, right. so that not everybody is looking at every standard indicator and element for everything because right. it is and I think, impossible. Right, and I think some of the frustration that I saw in years <coughs> past, and this is over not just with Dr. Carey but with Marty and even with Regina, was mm -hmm. that. So here's standard one, and then I provide you with, uh, oh, yeah. this is standard one, it, these that. are all the things that we're doing in this. So you read through it, and if you believe it, <laughs> you know what I mean, or you have to go get information outside of that. And it's that, that's the part, the system I want to just modify or make it more user friendly. Like I, you know, I want, right. you know, I do, you know, I do want feedback and even, you know, criticism, construction criticism, hopefully. Um, but I don't want to say, here's what I'm doing, and then people say, oh, yeah. But also, at the same time, I have to remind people. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's... <laughs> Justify it. You know, because yeah. I do have to say, there is a lot of things that are going on that sometimes people don't realize. Um, but, right. so, uh, my hope is to, at the June meeting, have some sort of online form to start. I think it's kind of an educational process to start with for this year's evaluation. Um, just kind of you looking through those indicators, getting people to read through, kind of doing general overview, and there's, there's a general comment section where people can kind of give yeah. their, 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 um, their thoughts. Um, and then next year, next year will be a more formal system because I'll have to have superintendent goals that go, right, hopefully, they're, hopefully they're going to tie in with the strategic goal, plan. Right? They will, I mean, not hopefully, they will tie in with the strategic plan, and they also will tie into the school improvement plan, so that's kind of, so that when you see those plans and we're making progress in those plans, then I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, right. hopefully. So, you know, Which is what I fully anticipate. <laughs> hey, Lily. <Hi. laughs> um, so I just want to make sure that we're staying on top of the information yep. and that we're not, again, burdening, every, overburdening yep. everybody, but keeping it, I mean, that is one of our main responsibilities. It is, <laughs> it is. To, it is. to evaluate and you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think maybe um, next year, if the chairs be willing to do it, we either create a subcommittee to go yeah, through. Yeah, I mean, it, I think you lean on the, the chairs chair, or to the do chairs it because do it. Why not let them represent their committees and bring to their voices? Right. I remember one year with Regina, one year or two years, I was chair at both Frontier and Union 38. <clears throat> so I had to get all this information from all the chairs, try to figure it out, and then meet. You know, and it's it's tough because. You may have one town that doesn't like him because he didn't agree with something, but the other three towns have no problem. Yeah. And that's the problem with sometimes with evaluation. Instead of doing it honestly on what exactly, they'll 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 do something different to a black you know, have a black eye on something and it's not and it's not true. I mean well, but that doesn't have to mean the whole score is bad. I think that's again just feedback that you should know that that town yeah. isn't happy with. Well, there's a happened. double. I mean, you have to look at evaluation is not because the way my contract is written and right. such, it and the way really superintendents impact work. In terms of if I'm not doing a good job, you, you you'll can move, let you you'll go. Move, you'll, move me along. <laughs> you'll either let me know, and then you'll move me along. That's the way. You right. don't see superintendents battling out, saying, you know, you gave me proficient last year, needs improvement this year. You have to right. legally, you know, whatever. It's you know, it's pretty cut and dry. I have a, I have a pretty unless unless you give me unless I get feedback that needs improvement or. Uh, Unsatisfactory. Unsatisfactory um, across the board, then they can be used for dismissal. But any superintendent worth their whatever is going to leave before that yeah, that gets hopefully. out. Um, God forbid any of this happens. <laughs> um, but the the other side is that there is a problem with that. Another just another thing I added on the list of things that, that my my. I have to take care of is that our regional agreement is not very clear no. about what happens, <laughs> and so let's say you know, um, two you towns know, love let's you. say you know, let's say the, the, the fictitious sixth town that I'm working for does not, you know, let's say I do a poor job. Let's mm -hmm. say I put you know make decisions that put in you know people into you know legal jeopardy or whatever that kind of stuff, and they say we want out. There's no right now. It doesn't. There's no language that says how the voting has to happen. work. Right. 
-hmm. You know what I mean? And so if there is Later, a split, it doesn't work in, in the case of is it two, no. There's no there, agreement. There's no. There's, yeah. no, there's, nothing, no, in the there's nothing in the agreement that talks about hiring and firing the superintendent. And that's why it's always been important that when we go through the process, that you know it's been a unanimous vote. You know, at that stage, you know, if if it's the one that mm -hmm. grounds for removal, what is it? Right. The majority vote? Is it a weighted vote? You know, is it each? Does each committee get one vote? Or does it, you know, you only have three people on this committee. Hey, we don't have already, much of a vote so, right. so that kind of thing, however, Deerfield would say we're 50% of the population. What's, that, what's our level of vote? And so those are all things that it's yeah. on my, it's on my that grander on list. Your goals. Of, well, it's on my grander list of w looking at the regional agreement and also talking about not regionalization per se, but how we can mainstream more Better. things. So I've kind of been saying that from the beginning, but I just have to. Yeah. Get some breathing room. Yeah. To, to and I'm not there. saying everything has to get done right away. Right. This is how you help ban it. Yeah, you're here for a long time. Right. But, <laughs> the, but, the, but the evaluation system does allow a way to give feedback. Yeah. Every member, and every member of voice share in the feedback. what you're thinking and what right. you would like also. And it's not just because I do hear from the chairs a lot more than other people. It does allow um, people that don't talk to a lot, quite frequently, basically, because there's 25 people. Like right. I said, if I have half hour conversation with each member a week, it would be half <laughs> That's a week. That's all you would do. Um, so, I, think, I think for this year, oh, your evaluation was that you were hired. There's some truth to that. I mean, yeah. you right. had to earn, right, 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 right. earn his job while he was in there. Yeah, and job. again, my point is that evaluations yeah, are not right, all right. like <laughs> doom and gloom. It's more like this is a way to keep moving towards those same goals and make sure that we're all on the same page. And as Judy said, SBA Which process. they're awful, yeah. but. That's <laughs> right. And I, and I get it. My concern is, again, is not the. The feedback and such is the right. how much how much has to be put into creating it works well for and there's so many in the other pots on the stove that i don't want to well, make sure we do it till we need to do to it be something usable right and well, honestly i'd rather you focus on giving evaluations to your team and the teachers get their evaluations because that's it starts sort of from the bottom up but yeah. we've seen situations where that you get so bogged down in the process that Right. You Nothing lose sight of what it's really useful for. comes well, out and that's, of the, right. And that, yeah. I'm not trying to accomplish that. Right. Um, okay. So, so we'll, I'm we'll, happy keep to moving. we'll keep that on the agenda yeah. for next week, next week, next okay. month as well. Um, oh, and then I added the update on central office staff changes because I'm just, I am mindful that the central office expenses for Blue are fairly sizable and I always want to take the opportunity when we can to look at what are there ways to save money mm -hmm. in any way. And I know um, Kim, Kim has become Louise, <laughs> which isn't the right way to say that. But yes. <laughs> Kim has been promoted to the Director of Elementary Curriculum. Is that the title? Um, director of Education. Education. Elementary okay. Focus. Um, and so that means her position will be open. So That's I'm just correct. curious what the thinking is there and how, if there's any opportunity to maybe make some savings. So, well, there'll be, when you talk about savings, are you talking about, that position is necessary, um, okay. you know, to have somebody overseeing the early childhood um, program is a necessary position. So um, right now it's it's posted mm -hmm. and there's a committee together to um, screen candidates. Does it need to be quite as senior a position or could it be a position that reports into Kim since she knows that job pretty well mm -hmm. at this point that maybe is less money? I don't know. I'm just trying to think of how to um, you know stretch the dollars a little sure. further and or build in some succession planning potentially. Okay. Um, so I, maybe it's a little late in the game, but it's just important to, you know, that it's like all the curriculum directors is forty nine, fifty thousand dollars in our budget, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying they're not important, but I just want I want to be mindful. We have a principal, we mm -hmm. have a superintendent, we have a curriculum director, we have technology director, we mm -hmm. have a lot of support, and I don't know if we need quite everybody at the highest levels. Like maybe there's some more. And we could use that money for you know earlier in their careers, learning, mm -hmm. building. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just some ideas to think about. So, All right. Um, and I know early education is important, and clearly we're making a priority in the preschool. So, um, you know, do you do some sort of lead like you did with the nurses, or you have a lead person that helps coordinate across all the schools and gets some extra for that? That'd be really tricky to do if you were also teaching in the class. Yeah. 
you know, I can, I can, I can have the conversation. Um, I mean, because these all reported to you. Because, yeah. That's the other thing. Like, you have to manage everything. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. Well, there's a lot of people. That, yeah, there's a lot of people that do reporting to me, um, and that's again. It's challenging. You know, and that's. You know, there's no assistant superintendent, but I, I am I do use the curriculum directors like superintendents mm -hmm. in, as far as it goes for curriculum and instruction. Mm -hmm. You know, they haven't been used that way for um, HR and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, although I, I do have discussions with them to, to you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, it's just that rare these positions open up rarely, and mm -hmm. so you rarely have the chance to restructure. And mm -hmm. so that's why I'm sort of making it point of looking at it carefully right now. You know, Louise was there 30 years, which is great, but it doesn't give you the chance to change things around it easily mm -hmm. if you want to. Mm -hmm. So I would just encourage you to think about what what else you might want to be accomplishing at With this those point. Positions? Because getting new positions is really hard. Right. Um, and if you have open positions, that's generally the way to make changes. Mm -hmm question about um, these new positions that come up in the school are they are contracted um, year to year is it a contract st structure around like the principles they're con your contract is similar to the principles okay are we still going to use like new wordings like we can all contracts there? moving forward are going to have okay. the, the stop gaps of the you know we, we talked about no the buyouts no more buyouts of sick days um, are we restrictions to, on vacation and whatever, all those other things that have been put in the last. Correct me if I'm wrong, did you say something Louise was going to structure her her buyout uh, around or? I don't have, I don't have any details okay. on that, so. Because right. um, I know that she was a, she plus a few other people have a, a few buybacks that's going to cost. Mm, that's going to hit us. A lot of money. <laughs> yep. I mean, I say a lot of money, it's, it's a lot of money. Thank so. you for a lot of Yeah. Yep. So that's one of the things that we should look forward to for how are we going to budget it? Where are we going to get the money? You know, all the time. Where are we, where are we going to get it all from and stuff? So, it just just a sim not a simple there goes our question. Budget surplus. <laughs> well, I mean, to get back to the thirty-four thousand less well, the gym or plus the gym, saying, yeah. we planned yeah. for that. We yeah. did oh, yeah. in FY twenty. Okay. So oh, there's good. there's okay. a holding yeah. spot. But there's yeah. also we're talking about if we have extra money, we just appropriated twenty thousand dollars. Uh, Warren item to do some floors. What do we got left after we do those floors, and how many does it have? You can only use it. You can only use it on what you say you're going to use it for. Well, I understand that, but we also have thirty-four thousand less the gym floor that we're going to have at, at towards the end of the year. Yeah. Could that take care of an, another? Could that take care of the library or something like that? That's on your list of floors to be done. That's. Well, right. Really well, that's about. what we were. I should ask that earlier. Right, but going taking a step back, it, it's a balance between the two because we also what we can do is take some of the school try to bring forward some more of that school choice surplus so that we are in a more comfortable spot next year. Um, sure. That was kind of that's why I was kind of saying maybe you do mm -hmm. a third, a third for you know I guess we we'll yeah. call it capital Catch expenses up. and then yeah. and then maybe the two thirds go to extending the budget okay. that forward so you have a little bit more. Yeah savings bringing forward so we're not in a tight spot next year. And so which ultimately helps the town so they don't have to put more money back right. in if, we, uh, if our school choice gets depleted. Right. And we can keep our school, our, our general budget low on increase next year and then the and then goal. try to do, you know, you know is that, is that, that balancing out and getting mm -hmm. capital projects from, from the, the town. Capital budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kissy, can you find after the the twenty thousand is spent on what we're going to be doing with that. What do we have left for floors that we need to be done in the future to give us an idea? Whether, right. whether you would know how much it'll be or how many more rooms we got to do, and you know, a lot. well, we did, well we that's, did a bunch. That's 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 exactly that's the capital that's, plan. That, that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly. I'm just trying, to, I'm just trying sure. to figure in the long term. You know, are we going after another Warren article for twenty thousand next year? To do more of the following, you know, the following year and stuff like that. I'm just trying to. When you say a lot, we've already done some, and we're going to be doing more. So I'm not sure how many of the lots are that you're talking about. Is how it? How many rooms still have carpet? <coughs> That's right. That's how it's going to yeah. end. Yeah. Just going to go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so no, just, just but there is, is going to be another round of carpet because basically the carpet is. 
all the carpet was put in at the same time, but yeah. we're staggering replacing it. And we're basically putting tile down we're with some tile rugs on it, or with not with top rugs yeah. or whatever they call yeah. it on top. Mm -hmm. right. and that's yeah, we had only done like three the yeah. last time, right? So that's there's we're, quite a bit left to do. Yeah. Right. There's still a couple more years of rotating those. Um, but that's exactly where we were talking about the capital plan. Like we kind of know it. It's written down. Bob has this listed up, but right. we, we should be able to pull it up and see. Well, next year is grades. Right. Three, you should blah, have to blah, blah, blah. Re rediscuss it every time right. yeah. to know. Like that should just be laid out. Yeah. And that should be we'll part of our. If it's a if it's a capital plan through a Warren item article, making sure we have our paperwork in when we're supposed to have it in. Yeah. You know, by a deadline or and something like that. And that will help because yeah. then we'll know exactly right. what's coming up. I, mean, I got to say, I love the way the waitlist capital. Group yeah, they I mean, the fact they came in here, they looked at everything. That was you know, they were very, they were very curious. That was the first they were very, time they did that. It was the first time. Mm -hmm. I wish, you know, I'm going to try to push other towns to do as well, mm -hmm. just because it was, a, it was just nice communication. They saw the yeah. whole building. Yeah, I'm glad they came to the school. Right, they know, you know what they're talking yeah. about. And then yeah, we talked, and they talked about other issues. Better. And they talked about issues that were solved in the past. They were talking about issues that may come up. In the future. It was just mm -hmm. a nice conversation. Um, I felt, I felt like we were really heard, and they mm -hmm. were really caring about the building. You know, so. I want to try to get the other. Clear communication. Yeah. Right. And so. so speaking of Bob, um, how's, what about his position? Bob, so you said he's, Ed, do we know anything? Yes. Wait, can we talk about it? It's on my, it's on my superintendent report. Oh, um, oh. But the, um, so, Morning yes. Morning leave, so, so what, Bob, yeah, we Oh, yeah, we'll go for it. Um, so Bob, um, his last day is early August. Oh. So, um, oh. so yeah, so it is posted. Um, as of yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and so um, inter uh, the interview thing is I have it posted for this month, starting June one is close, and then we're going to see what we have. Um, the Bob's position is I think is it has changed slightly from someone who's really hands on on a lot of projects to really overseeing a lot of projects, and so that's mm -hmm. really what that facilities director looks like now, especially with the amount of. The amount of capital projects that are happening in each of the buildings has also gone up, um, as the, each of the buildings have gotten older the last 10 years since Bob's been there. Um, there have been new buildings in the last 10 years. Um, so, you know, that, that position, you know, um, very detailed job description on, on school spring with that right now. Um, put, a lot, put a lot of... Uh, Hopefully we'll get some good candidates. Yeah, do you think that's a straightforward bill? Or? Would it be hard to find someone? Or? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think, it's I think interesting. A, I think there's a lot of qualified people oh, that know the regs. There's a good job for somebody. That wants it, it, may, it may be a, a very good job for a obviously a, a second career type. Yeah. And I'm not saying it could be a first career too, but, right. but in the sense of someone you know, has experience. Someone that has experience, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, with knowledge of different trades and, um, you know, working with contractors and that kind of thing. I mean, you have. We had excellent health care. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you have to say it's a good benefit for, um, you know, a lot of people working in trades don't have the health care they, they're paying out of pocket for mm -hmm. it. So, um, you know, I, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a, I don't say it's a fun job, but it's a, you know, but <laughs> for somebody. It, it, I think, <laughs> to me, I like, I, I think it's a fun job in the sense of that there's a lot going on. You're constantly, you're, mm -hmm. every day is different, <laughs> new projects, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I guess that Bob's probably laughing right now if he's yeah. watching and saying, yeah, two the, at two in the morning when I'm called in because of something, it's not, <laughs> it's not a fun job. But, um, so is school spring the Rewarding right? job. How's that? Rewarding, yes. There you go. Is school spring, spring the right spot? Uh, we're going to post in the paper as well. But school spring is the easiest way to, um, I, I think, it, it just tracks I trades people would be looking on a website. Yeah. Like so we'll post website. in the paper and it says, please apply there. Please, please apply to the mm -hmm. school spring thing. Quite frankly, this this position will also require that you have, um, you know, basic computer skills for the amount of, you know, corresponding and communication we have to do. So um, they can also apply. And he's also the new person is going to work with Bob for a period of time too. To yeah, we're working on. We're seeing. That's we're going to see. The problem is that we have we have several overlaps people, and the problem is that that cost more money. So we got to kind of just be careful because um, we already know. Um, as you guys know, because you're the joint meeting, sorry, over there. Um, but there's a new business manager who's going to do overlapping time, and we're trying to even well, extend she, that more. When is she going to start? Um, we're working on doing some days in June, mm -hmm. and then we have the full month of July as an overlap. So, um, you know, that's actually what I'm working on today is what day <coughs> we're going to do. So mm -hmm. she's got approval from her 
position to kind of a mix to help them with their payroll during their month of June and then also do some onboarding. And June and I met yesterday and talked about um, areas that she can help her with um, that transition. So, but again, you're paying two visions Twice, at the same yeah, time. But, it's important, but it's, it's important, but at the same time, some of the budgets are tight. Can I make a suggestion that we um, do executive sessions so Maureen's part of it before she? I, mean, I, I have know five it's, minutes. Okay. Do you want to? That's fine. You want to do that? You can get the overview in the first five minutes of what we're talking about. I can, if we go to executive session now, I can give you before you walk you out want the door. To, whatever yeah. works. Okay. I'll make a motion it's to go page to two. Yeah, because we can executive do Executive session, later. chapter 38, section 21, paragraph two, deduct uh, strategy session, prepare negotiation, non union personnel to collective bargaining sessions uh, for contract negotiations with non union personnel. You know, and then say you're also going to do MGL 31A. Three, to discuss strategy to respect to collective bargaining litigation is an open, if an open meeting, excuse me, open me meeting may have a general effect on bargaining and litigation position of a public body and the chair so declare. So basically you're going for both non-union and union. Okay. Are you coming back to open session? You just have to say that as part. Yeah. Um, and then we'll return to the open session. And for that. reports yes. and stuff. For the so final you have to, reports. You have to do roll call. Roll call. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Maureen, Katie, yes. Okay. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> so, oh, I lost my agenda. But, uh -huh. um, Here. We're on to the updates, I believe. Yes. So I don't have any further updates. Um, so the reports, the capital projects. Capital so projects. we did have town meeting and they did approve the- Right, all our nice projects. Did, well, not all, they did the carpet. The carpets, the air conditioning. Flooring, AC, yeah. That's, well, all we yeah. really asked for, I think. Um, that we didn't get the- The tables. The, we didn't ask for the We didn't ask for the tables, but the AC in the kitchen was not approved. For this year? For this year, so okay. it's been brought next year. But so, yeah, got those, those things going, so we'll get moving on those. How many how many mini splits are we do getting for $15,000, and where are they going? I think they said two. There'd be oh. two. Oh, one, two, okay, so I saw. one for each one. of the offices okay. there. And then the... Are there air conditioners up. in there already? Will those go somewhere else? They're window, the window units. units. Window units. And so that becomes. And they only fit in those types. And they're at they're they're at the end they're of their. At the end of their they're life. at the end of their lives. Okay. Whether or not they could be used somewhere else, like in the you kitchen? know, no. the problem is they become a security issue because you oh. just push, they'd be screwed in and that right. kind of stuff. If they're not installed properly. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say. People in there. Um So we'll get those okay. in place. So that's the capital. I don't have any other update. Maureen isn't here. Principal. Principal. Um, so you stole my thunder at the beginning with I'm your thank you. Um, well, you can so I would like to thank the members of the school committee, the select board, finance committee, residents of Waitley, and Superintendent Modesto for supporting the school in preparing and improving um, our nice budget that will provide a great school experience for all our kids next year and then also into the future. Um, and in the way of appreciation, this is Educator Appreciation Week, and I'd like to thank all of the staff at Waitley Elementary School. I, think mm -hmm. I consider everyone who works in this building to be a piece of um, the education that goes on here. Uh, so we're all educators. Um, thank them for their devotion to our students and their dedication to providing them with the best possible school experience. And I would like to thank the PTO for thanking mm -hmm. the, the staff. They um, have planned a whole week of treats for um, our staff members and that's really it's it's really great I think um, you know a lot of it is food um, and it's it's a great way to show people that you really do care the way that parents step up around here to show their appreciation um, it's remarkable we completed uh, ELA MCAS last week and it ran more smoothly than anything I had <laughs> anticipated. I had planned for all of the pitfalls I was accustomed to, um, and there, there were none. Um, I also kept a close eye on how our students were handling the, the mm. pressure of taking the test, um, particularly our third graders, since it's their first time. And I think because of the way that it was framed by uh, the, the staff, kids you know, put, put their best effort into it, but no one 
seem to be suffering from undue stress. And so that was, that was important. Um, we had an ad in the newspaper this past weekend. A um, couple newspapers, The Recorder and The Gazette and Valley Kids. Um, we still have a few school choice spots, so anyone who wants to um, come in and take a tour or fill out a packet is encouraged to do so. We will be awarding those spots on May 20th. Um, this is what the color copy of the nice. ad looked like. Um, in the newspaper, it looked like this. <laughs> so, um, but the, the person at the, either the Gazette or the Recorder said it was the nicest ad they had ever seen. For, oh, for school very good. Very good. <laughs> it is a very appealing picture. Well, we in color. I know. I know. Yeah. Use your imagination. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No. No. Gearing up for the end of the year. Oh, on the back, there's yes. like many, many dates of things that are coming up. Right. Um, Not much time left. There, there is not. It's amazing how fast amazing it comes up, and it, it feels this year even more mm -hmm. of a surprise because we're getting out on the 14th. Yeah. I don't think I remember ever mm -hmm. getting out that early. So all those cursing of the principal, I mean the superintendent, yeah. on those snow days that Your weren't fault. called. I'll take those cards. Now and you're a hero. You. <laughs> now, now people are thanking you. I have the, the seniors invited me to a fundraiser. It has something to do with like squirting water, and they want to squirt me because it was only two snow days. Because <laughs> they don't have to make up the snow days, you know, and so I'm not. I'm um, one thing that's on here. I'm not there, but right their favorite superintendent. On June 13th, we'll be having our family picnic. So I'd oh, that's nice. The, uh, that's a new thing. Well, it used to be combined with um, field day. Okay. And we are separating, separating the two. It. Field oh, day is going to be a little earlier than usual this year, and. We okay. felt like having a family yeah. picnic nice. on that second to last day of school would be great. So, Bob, we'd love you to come, and and Judy, you can come as well. The, I'm assuming the other two will be, <laughs> I'll here, be as, here as moms. That's a big day for you yeah. because it's great. Right my last graduation. graduation is that night. <laughs> I know. Woohoo! No. <laughs> I just, the other day I signed. I'm not sure how many there were. A hundred something yeah. diplomas oh, yeah. I signed. And I had an autograph the other day for the diplomas at Frontier. So it's like. Wow. <laughs> Sit there it's real. Yeah. yeah. Poor kid with a W on his last name. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even read your hand right <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Christy. Okay. All right. Um, superintendent's report. Um, the, the, again, starting overview where we are with negotiations. Frontier is um, close to, I, I'd say completing, but we're working on the final approval of the contract. But the, Negotiation meetings are over, okay. um, so we're just waiting on the, the final um, approval of each side. The uh, union, those are the, just the ongoing the meetings that we've had, and then the tentative dates that haven't been formally scheduled, we'll be doing those at our meeting on Thursday, um, the dates coming up. Um, as mentioned earlier in the meeting, some of these things we talked about, but um, um, Kim McCarthy is the new director of education. Mm -hmm. and, um, we currently have a committee looking for an early childhood position, and I'll come back to the committee with more information about that position. I think that's some of the part, as I was thinking about after we talked about it, just really showing what that person does, and mm -hmm. so we can see if, we, if we're going to scale it differently. We're already moving in one direction, but we, still it's worth having a conversation. Um, Shelly um, Pareto was also, um, since our last meeting, at the joint meeting was voted in as the um, next business manager for mm -hmm. the FY20. Year. Um, Bob Lesko has announced his retirement and will be we posted his position mm -hmm. and we'll be doing that um, interview schedule in June. So this one is a new thing that just came out hot off the press. Um, is the DESI has come out with a new interpretation of and there's a separate handout regarding it that regional school districts students in the elementaries do not get an automatic placement in the regional school district Ooh. starting next year. Okay. Um, what does that mean? Um, is that we have to, A, communicate that with school choice families, and two, that they will have to apply for school choice at Frontier. Mm -hmm. This may be a, it may not have a major impact unless they're, unless the grades are close to being full. There have been years that middle school at Frontier, we had to close off school choice enrollment, um, and then they would have to go to a lottery system 
for all students applying in. Mm -hmm. So we've always taken them automatically in and then opened up more school choice slots after that. What this would create is that we'd have to all students moving up. Mm -hmm. So there's probably about 10 in each class or so based on our, maybe a little bit more, probably about 15 in each class moving up to Frontier if that's all the four schools combined. Um, they automatically get in and then if we have you know five or so spots is basically we have we take those students in. There has been a few years in the last few years where we've had to close mm -hmm. school choice in middle school um, to keep under the 120 number, um, which allows us to keep our sections at no larger than 20 from 22 to 24. Um, so that would create them to have to go into a full poll uh -huh. and that kind of thing. So that's fresh Do siblings get a priority or anything? Yes. Over, so that's yeah, still. That would happen, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so this is true for any school system that is Regional. participating in school choice? Any school system as part of, they're just changing I mean, I, when you look, take a step back and you look at it, it there does make some sense in the sense that you're leaving what is legally one school system and you're going to what is legally a separate school system. We may regionalize and be able to do something kind of funny with that, but it, to, to, to change those kind of things, but because we're considered a part of a different system, you have to reapply for school choice. So like Northampton, they don't have to do that because they're all one district. Correct. But Amherst does, because Amherst, Amherst does. Right. Concerns that that would give people pause. Well, it could create, right. I mean. On it, our, <coughs> I come here to try and get into the high school. Correct. You know, there's, well, there's some people that like the, the full they system. They like the full to system. They stay with right. the group of kids they've right. been with, yeah. Right. Um, you know, and that will be something that we'll have to look at when we look at numbers. Mm -hmm. The numbers are coming down. Enrollment overall in the district is down a little bit in the elementaries. So you know, it's kind of a spike again in the lower grades. But in the next groups that are coming through, where we can see about the numbers that are going to high school, where it may not affect. Yeah, Frontier know. has a lot of spots right now, right? Well, the, uh, not, the, not the middle school. Not the middle school. Okay. And what happens at the middle school is they come in at seventh grade and eighth grade. After eighth grade, some of these kids will go on to tech. So we lose oh, that group of kids. And of some of those may be school choice kids, too, right. that we may, we may lose. So we'd be looking for sometimes for people for that ninth grade for school choice. Mm -hmm. our, our seventh grade class, usually the incoming class from the, we'll call it from the district, from all four towns, is around uh, there's around 130 students in this in the in the sixth grade class and then by the time they go to seventh grade there's also a drop off there's some people choose private schools and some people choose you know choose charter schools and then some people mm -hmm. um maybe if they choiced into their district they want to go back to you know they may go back to their own mm -hmm. their own little school depending on you know, it's a, it's a, you know, whatever. Yes. So you lose about, we lose about 10 to 12 students there. So we're, we come in around 120. Okay. And at 120, we can have the number of sections that we have of balanced classes without going over number 24. Mm -hmm. We try not to go over 24 due to science classes and science labs and that kind of stuff. But, um, and so then we cap it at 120. And then if we get any new students, we just, new students in the district, they obviously, they go home. Okay. So, if the sixth grade class, and then at eighth grade, so we get 100, so then we have, let's say we have 120 students, we lose between 15 and 20 students going into high school, because tech will take about 15, mm -hmm. and then you have about five students going to just private high schools, such as DA, right. we have like two or three that go to DA, a couple of Northfield, yeah. you know, that kind of thing, and so then you lose a couple there, so then our class size has always been around 100. So that's kind of the, the formula there. So. You know, we'll have to look at it because we can, you know, we'll have to look at what the, the size of the classes are coming up for the next you know, three or four years. Mm -hmm. And if that number is down, then the school choice thing's not going to be an issue. It'll be a lottery and everybody gets in. You know what I mean? Or we don't have to do a lottery if we have no, no, enough numbers of space, enough spaces. Right. spaces. And so. But I think you're right, there is a connection. Like, as the mark, we think about the marketing of the district. Mm -hmm. Either we become one district, in which case then it's not an issue, or. We have to keep State's going to have to kick, kick in a lot of money if, if they want to do K through 12 for, for regionalization because it's going to cost a small fortune for the four towns to do something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of things involved, not only salaries and insurances. It's it's 
probably the biggest thing is insurance and salary. Salaries and insurance yeah. is yeah. Making, yeah. making the making adjustment there. The yeah. Yeah. I mean, we might get more regional transportation, but that's been cut. Yeah, the right. problem is what we're promised and what we did is two different things. The things know? that have been used to incentivize the, um, I can't put that word out, <laughs> um, regionalization is stuff that they cut later on down the road. So mm -hmm. if we did it because of transportation, there's some years it gets down and to, then you don't get it gets it. down, right now it's at 80%, but some years it gets down below. Um, Right now, the educational budget is in front of the Senate, actually today. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see what happens there. But um, the 22nd, if you didn't catch up, basically the Western Mass and the regional schools, they called it Bloody Monday. Um, oh. But they basically cut all those things, that, those wonderful things that, they added. <laughs> that you thought that, that there was, we were hoping to have one or, one or two of these went through that would have really saved our budgets well none of them went through mm -hmm. and so the only thing that really went through was the increased chapter 70 people spending to 30 dollars um it was 20 mm -hmm. and and keeping transportation at 80 percent um you know that will help out the frontier budget um the transportation reimbursement and you know the 30 dollars will help a little bit but it's not anything compared to some of those other things that we're being thrown around as wonderful that we're making us all kind of happy but um and then the last one really has to do with frontier okay. um but they are now they made a change in the law has to do with frontier but they made a change in the law for signing the warrants over the summer they can elect one person to do it oh, before nice. before they had a problem that the law was everybody had was, to well they had to make a small they make a subcommittee of three and it was kind of yeah, they may, may clarify that. I know who we can put there. I know who's going to do it. Um, and then I have the bottom new school committee members. Um, you know, as of last night when I put this Deerfield, I believe they have a new school committee member. Um, it was in, I have to read the paper actually if I know who it is. It was a write in. And then um, Jessica Corn um, from Sunderland and Conway, we won't know until after until late May. But they have some shifts out there too. Nobody's opposing me, so you're stuck with me. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're in and we're happy to have them. My campaign is over. <laughs> How much money did you spend in your campaign? Did you release those documents? Um, I would welcome other people to get involved, so. <laughs> so that's all okay. I have. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, so we're done. That's it. Take a motion, motion adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.